Okay, I really tried recording this video, but the stupid camera didn't got it. Anyway, all right, hello everyone. Okay. Um, what was this about? Oh yeah, front squats. On this video, I want to talk about front squats. One of my favorite accessory lifts. <sighs> the reason that I want to talk about this is because Alpha Destiny recently made a video talking the best squats for bigger quads. And full disclaimer, I am a big fan of Alpha Destiny. There is a lot of stuff that he has said that I have implemented into my training that has been really useful. Um, so this is not defamatory in any way, I just want to share my talks on the matter. So he said that the reason that he doesn't like the front squat is because for one thing he has a lot of mobility requirements. It sacrifices the load severely compared to a hybrid squat. And because um, it can just over put overuse on the shoulders. So let's actually, let's actually um, address these claims and I will also talk about why I personally really love this lift. So starting about the claim about the load, it's kind of interesting because he said that a front squat is not a good option because it sacrifices the load way too much, or at least that's what he heavily implied. But then he also said that a better substitution is a safety bar squat because it only sacrifices the load by around 15% compared to a regular high bar squat. The thing is, a front squat, if you are a balanced athlete, if you don't have like a severe um, muscle weak point, a front squat should be only around 15% less than a regular squat. And this isn't just coming than a regular high bar squat. And this isn't coming just from me. This is coming from Charles Parlequin. He had a thing about strength standards of a balanced athlete and he said that a front squat should be 15% of a high bar squat. Where we're talking about one rep max, a five rep max, a ten rep max, doesn't, well, okay, if you get too high then I can understand like the clean grip becoming a limiting factor, but if we're talking like a, say, eight reps and less, yeah, your front squat should be around the ballpark of 15% less than your regular high bar squat. Um, he also made the argument that there was no real benefit compared to other ones. I will say the main benefit that you get from a front squat is that it spares the lower back. Because there is no way of you hunching forward, a front squat spares the lower back quite a bit because you have to keep your torso straight. So you cannot like uh, try to good morning it, which is basically where a lot of the stress that gets to the lower back comes from, from that good morning motion. You don't really get that from a front squat. Um, no, you could make the argument that in a that if that you can try to do the same thing on a high bar squat, but the thing is with a front squat you just can't. With a high bar squat you can force yourself to not do it, but with a front squat you get forced mechanically to not do it. If that makes sense. So yeah, front squat is a really great option in my opinion because that's the main benefit that it offers. It's kind of similar to like a belt squat in that sense in that it lowers the stress on the lower back. Now obviously it's different because a pelvic squat actually gives you a little bit of traction on the spine. Yeah, so a front squat is kind of like good in that way because it allows you to get more volume on the quads without really having extra volume on the lower back. And a lot of the back squat variations just don't really offer that. So in my opinion that already is a big advantage of the front squat. Um, so that's as far as advantages. He also talked about um, oh yeah, the absolute load, like as I mentioned before, if you are balanced and you have muscle weaknesses, it will be the same as an SSP squat according to Alpha Destiny. He said an, an SSP squat will only be 15% less. Well, if you are balanced and you don't have like a major weakness, like a front squat should also not be less than 15% of your hyper squat. I mean, when you're just starting out, yeah, it's going to be less because you are getting used to moving, but after a while, that's basically about it. Okay, so that's for that. Um, and finally, I just want to address the overuse thing. He said that it puts a little bit more overuse on like the wrist and the shoulders because of the positioning. And I will just say that isn't necessarily the case. As with any exercise, overuse is more a matter of how you implement it into, into your training uh, rather than the specific biomechanics of your exercise. Now sure, something like a stiff like deadlift is gonna lend itself to like, especially if it's like from an actual dead stop, yeah, you're gonna be able to do significantly less volume on that, on that than say like a, legs, like a leg press. 
just because the overuse that it puts is greater. And similarly, a front squat is kind of the same. You have to know how to implement it into your training based on how you respond to it. Personally, I, um, I implement it sporadically, like for a few blocks at a time, and then sometimes I just take it off. When I do implement it, it's usually only once a week. Actually, it's always only once a week. I don't really do it more than that. It gives plenty of times for my um, my wrist to, you know, recover, even though I have perfected my technique to a point where I don't really feel a lot of pain on the wrist anymore. Same thing as the shoulders. Like, with as with any lift, yeah, it can come with some overuse if you program it too much, if you do it too much, but if you know how to program it and give yourself enough time to recover, which is going to be kind of individual. Also, yeah, parenthesis, the topic of programming and how I program my training, that's something I'm going to cover in a different video. I'm not going to go too much into it here, but in short, overuse is just a matter of how you program a, li a given lift into your training based on your anatomy, your technique, and your response to that lift. Okay, so now that we have countered that, let's actually talk about the benefits of front squats. So, the, there are actually a few benefits. One of them is one that I attest earlier about being able to train your quads even when your lower back is tired. Like, there are sessions where I have been able to do a front squat right after a max effort deadlift. I will do a max effort deadlift, which, for, I mean, admittedly, lift at me is like anywhere from 180 to probably a little bit of, above 200, maybe 210, depending on the variation that I'm using. Somewhere along those lines, kilograms, uh, 180 kilograms to 210 kilograms, depending on the variation that I'm using. I've been able to like do a max effort variation, follow with your front squat. That is not that hard and it's actually great because it allows you to get volume on your quads without really excess taxing on the lower back. Um, however, the main benefit, in my opinion, is that it teaches you, it forces you how to brace. It teaches you to brace, it forces you to brace. On this video, I did a set of front squats. Um, this set of front squat was 115 kilograms for a set of five with the intention of it being an unwrap. This was 115 kilograms for a set of seven, also with the intention of it being an unwrap. They were both recorded in the same day, about, I will say, half an hour apart or so. And the main reason that I was able to get those two extra reps here is because I braced properly. So here I didn't brace properly, I lost my position in the first rep and I just let the bar to like get into this weird position where it kind of kept tiring me out and it wasn't bracing properly and then I kind of lost the grip and then that just led to me failing more or less towards the end because I just couldn't really balance the bar anymore after rep 5. Uh, here actually as you can see my quads were more or less the limiting factor. I was able to keep the bar balanced between my shoulders and thigh rep and in fact if you see the last one, the like, grindy rep at the end, most of the grind came from my quads not really from my uh, core or my upper back. Which is to say, it forces you to brace. It forces you to brace your, um, your core really deeply because otherwise you're gonna hinge forward and you're gonna miss reps as you saw from my example. But it also forces you to brace your upper back. It forces you, it teaches you to strengthen your upper back to really hold yourself tight under that load even though it's trying to push you forward, you're trying to keep your upper back in such a way that you're keeping the load uh, where it's supposed to go and it's not really hinging you forward, like you're actually holding it with the upper back. So it's going to strengthen, at least isometrically, the lower back, but it's also going to strengthen the core. And my opinion, this is also a big benefit. Especially if you're interested in strength, those areas, especially the lower back, in my opinion, is like one of the biggest areas that people get injured on. From what I have seen, I would say it's probably followed by like shoulders and then lastly by the knees, but the lower back is probably number one. And a lot of times it's because people don't really know how to brace properly or are just not strong enough to hold the weight tight and keep themselves tight with the lower with their back. And a front squat pretty much solves both of those issues. It strengthens your core because again, if you don't brace properly, you are not gonna get as many reps as possible. Like, if you want to get better at the front squat, you have to keep yourself tight, period. 
Uh, and also as far as the lower back goes, uh, and, and the upper back, same thing. I mean, the back is an entire system, which a lot of people kind of forget about, but the back is a system. If you run the upper back enough, eventually there will be some rounding on the lower back. So by forcing you to strengthen the upper back, in a sense, is also carrying to the lower back. Strengthening these joints and these muscles, and teaching yourself how to brace properly, man, like, in my opinion, from what I've seen, that's like the biggest issue that causes people to injure their lower backs while lifting, while deadlifting or doing good mornings. So if you solve those issues, if you strengthen those two points, that's gonna be great for preventing injuries, especially if you are interested in training for strength. So I would say that's actually also a big factor. Now, I will admit, at the beginning, you're not gonna get as much of a stimulus from the front squat, and that's because you're gonna have to work on your core, your technique, because it's a little bit technical, Obviously not like an Olympic lift, but it's mildly technical. So you're gonna have to work on the technique, you're gonna have to work on the core, and you're gonna have to work on the upper back first. Make sure you get those on points, and then you're gonna be able to actually find benefits from, for your quads. So anyway, yeah, this is the same as with any other lift. You're gonna have to perfect your technique before you start getting carryover. But it doesn't take as much as you may think. Like, if you already have to strengthen your legs, and if you were already good at high bar squats, Learning how to brace is only going to take you a few weeks, and then after that, it's going to be a mixture. I would say a few months, maybe like two months on the line, you know, that's like two mesocycles. You will start seeing the right carryover at that point. It doesn't take too long, and trust me, it is worth it. It's probably going to reduce your risk of injury, at least in my opinion. If you know how to implement it properly, the overuse is not going to be, is not going to be there. And it can get you more volume on your quads, even when your lower back isn't like super, isn't feeling like amazing. It, it spurs the lower back. I'm not gonna say it's a restoration and a strength builder, but it does spur the lower back. Uh, so for all of those reasons, I think you should definitely consider introducing the front squat to your training. Now I will say it has certain mobility requirements, uh, you know, panty flexion and also, you know, uh, wrist mobility and shoulder mobility. Even if you're doing the bodybuilder style with your arms crossed like this, it has certain requirements. You're gonna have to decide if you have those or not. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't. And you know, for certain people, but there are ways to work around this. Like if your biceps are too big, which sadly that is not something I can relate, but if your biceps are too big, you can just use straps and hold it in place with that, in like this form. Um, if you find that you have a problem with your panty flexion and you cannot squat very deep with a front squat because you know you can no longer uh, rely on a mixture of hip extension, you cannot use your hips as much to reach, reach depth, then maybe try using some elevated, elevated heels and you know working on, working on your panty flexion while you're at it. So in my opinion, it is worth it to actually be able to do a front squat and introduce it to your training. I will say for a lot of people, it can definitely help them. As with any other lift or variation, obviously it's not mandatory and whether you put it or not, I guess ultimately it's up to you. I'm just saying there are benefits to front squats and there are good reasons why you should have them. And they can be a magnificent squat builder. In fact, um, they can... Well, yeah, they can be a magnificent squat builder, they can help you even on your deadlift, especially if you are weak off the floor, and they can also help you build bigger quads, quite significantly. So yeah, anyway, uh, this has been it for this video. I'm gonna talk about programming in another coming video. If you guys like these long formatted videos, just let me know and I will make more of them. Uh, kind of talking about different lifts and stuff, and different programming techniques and just like more in-depth topics and yeah um, see you guys next time